Okay, how's everybody today? I'm just gonna spotlight myself here. Actually, I'm gonna introduce Annette while her picture's up there. <laughs> I don't know, oh, just a sec here. Um, here we go. So how's everyone today? Awesome. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the class. It's uh, Moving Beyond Realism. And this, the um, basic way I'm going to run this is like one of the classes, if, you, if you're if you interested in, in uh, taking one of my Zoom classes. Um, what I generally do is I'll do a demo for about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how much is, is in it. And then I'll... Um, I'll open it up to discussion and to, to showing work. But this time we're not going to do that because we've got way too many people. But um, um, and this time I have help, which is great. We have uh, uh, just a sec here. There's Annette, Annette Witchman. <laughs> you can, um, I, I think I muted you. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. So Annette is going to help us out by um, reading the, uh, the questions in the chat. Um, so if you have questions while I'm doing the demo, just, just write them down and uh, Annette will be able to, to um, either answer them or ask them out loud for me. So I don't have to keep looking over at chat, <laughs> which is great. Um, and thank you so much, Annette, for, for helping out. Okay, so um, there we go. Um, so... Uh, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about moving beyond realism, realism. Um, I still, when, when we want realism, we want things to look like something. We want it to, to be a recognizable something. Um, when we move beyond realism, we're adding just abstract elements into that, but it's still recognizable as something, okay? So um, we're going to do a bear today, but what I want to show you first is um, a really, I'm going to do a really big picture of an eye and because I have a formula for doing eyes that really works well. It, um, it uh, gives an eye with a lot of light in it and a lot of personality and it, it I, I want you to always follow the picture you're using, you know, put the eyes in the right position in the right shape and stuff like that. But this formula gives you a way of creating really lifelike eyes. And when you're, when you're making an animal, I've always said that as long as the eyes and the nose are, um, are in the right place and done correctly, you can do whatever you want with the rest of the animal. And, it will still read as that animal, okay? You can blur edges, you can change the shape and everything, but as long as those eyes and that nose are correct, that animal will, will read correctly, okay? And that's how you get beyond the realistic, okay? And you, you know, you can, you can make less realistic eyes, but I, I, I love, I love uh, animals with really, really bright, beautiful, light-filled eyes. Okay, so, um, what I'm going to do is I'll just kind of, as I'm painting, I'll tell you what colors I'm using and what I'm doing. And if you want to take photos of your screen or um, take notes or whatever, go right ahead. Uh, let's see. I need to find my camera view again. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here we go. So what I'm going to start with, and this, this, I always start with color down on my canvas. And the reason for that, the reason for starting with color is always, when you paint a picture on white, what you end up with is little bits of white, little points of white all showing through throughout the picture. And it takes a long time to fix that. And it looks unfinished if there's a lot of white showing through. Um, if you start with a warm color like this, to, to me, this color gives a feeling of life, even if there's like the little, little tiny bits of red showing through. And this overall feeling of, of uh, warmth is almost like, it, you can think of it like blood under the skin, okay? It gives a real sense of life because there's this, this warmness to the whole thing, okay? Um, the, color I generally use for this is cadmium red light. 
but you can use what any kind of orangey red. And you don't ha even have to use orangey red. You can, you can use any color. I just like this because it does give that sense of uh, blood under the skin. And then I use um, cobalt blue to sketch with all the time. So um, I'm gonna do a, an eyeball first. We're gonna, we're gonna run through the process of doing an eye. So I, I have someone asking, um, Violet's asking, why is there tape on the canvas? It's actually paper. This is watercolor paper on, on a board. I'm gonna use a, a, like a stretch canvas later. That's this down here to do the bear. But right now, just for the demo, because I, I'm just doing a sketch, um, I don't wanna waste canvas, okay? So I'm just using watercolor paper. So just, I'm gonna do a really big eye here. Probably a bigger paintbrush. Um, with our bear, we're going to start with a purple under under tone to the whole bear. So I'm just going to put some purple down to start with around this circle, which is the iris of my eye. Okay, but I want some of that purple undertone happening. And I want lots of color. I don't want big blank spots happening where we see, we would see unpainted area around the eye, which is what you get if you don't, if you don't put down color first. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do when we're creating an eye is we're gonna paint the iris one color. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna use um, burnt umber. Okay, and I'm just gonna create a ball. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this so big is so you can actually see the steps because they're quite subtle. Okay. So create my ball. Now I want to use um, Payne's Gray. I don't want to go quite black, black, black yet. And I'm going to get a bigger brush again I'm using a that first brush I had was a one inch, and now I'm using a, um, a one and a quarter inch flat or bright, however you like to call it. And again, I'm just going to do the shadow around the eye. If you think of if you think of a skull, think about the huge circle that makes up the empty spots in a skull. Okay, here we have a skull. <laughs> those big big holes that the eyes sit in um if you think about that just about every animal every person has shadow because of that their eyeball sits in the center of that and because of that there's like a ridge line that shadows the eye and in this case because it's a bear i'm all i'm doing is starting with um Payne's gray to give it that shadow around the eye okay uh, I'm painting in that that um, that hole basically, and then I take black and start forming the eyelid and everything else around it. Okay, I could even do, I could probably even use a bigger brush. Just a second. Okay, so our eyes are generally, even, even animal eyes, are generally almond shaped. Okay, that means a point at this end and a point at that end, right? And our eyes have uh, a pupil, a black pupil. Now, a lot of people want to put the um, pupil right in the center of the eye, like here. That is a bad idea for, for bears. And it's a bad idea for animals in general um, because it makes them look like they want to kill you. <laughs> they have that, that monofocused, uh, I'm, I'm coming in for the kill look when you put the, the uh, pupil right in the middle of the eye. And their pupils are quite large. So we want to attach the pupil to the top lid like that, okay? I'm going to I'm going to give him a bit of a, an eyelid too. Okay. 
Okay. So the next thing I would do is under that pupil, I'm taking a lighter brown. In this case, I'm taking burnt sienna. I want to, oh, just a sec here. Or another color as well. This is where we start adding light into the eye. We start with, with burnt sienna, and then we add some, in this case, because we're doing a brown eye, we, we add some raw sienna, okay? And this is going to, um, to start to give some of that light. Now, And I am going to add some black in here for the hair of, of the bear, okay? This is where we could brush in, brush in some hair, okay? To make it look like an actual bear eye. Close that up a little bit. And I want, I want this to dry up a little faster. So I'm just gonna turn, I'm gonna mute my uh, my microphone for a sec while I hair dry this. Jins, that would be great. Here we go. So now, now that I've um, um, have it dry, I can go over top of the black, which is what I want to do next. I'm just putting down some titanium buff and some titanium white on my palette now. <clears throat> There is in the shape of the eye, let's see here if I can draw it real quick. In the shape of the eye, you have an eyelid with lashes, then you have the eyeball, and then you have the bottom, the bottom lid kind of thing, okay? So there's a, a, a reflection that comes from the light that hits the top of the eye right there, that's the eyeball, okay? And there's a reflection on this, this bottom lid here, okay? So for the reflection at the top, what it's reflecting is very often the sky, okay? So it's got usually got kind of a blue tint to it. Oh, a bigger brush. And what I do is I make a very thin glaze of, um, in this case, I'm using Titan Buff and uh, Cobalt Blue, because that's what's on my palette. And I'm gonna put that, very kind of subtle glaze right over the top of that eye where that light would hit, okay? And that can be a reflection of the eyelashes too. That might break it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna start adding some, some light colors into it. Uh, Again, I'm doing a little bit of cobalt blue with Titan buff down here on this reflected, on this, this bottom lid where the reflection hits. If you look at your own eye in the mirror, you'll see that the light hits right in here. Okay, sometimes there's some light over here too. And I didn't do it in white yet. We're gonna add a little bit of white in, in there to make it lighter, but um, I didn't wanna do that quite yet. My reflection is moving around a little bit. Okay. So now just pure Titan buff. Yeah, add some more light, some more light in here. 
and then pure white for just a spot. Okay, now he's starting to get some get some character. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of tight and buff with raw sienna for underneath the pupil again because I want it to be a little bit lighter right in here. Get more a bigger stroke. And okay, we're getting getting somewhere with that. And then the highlight through here. It's fairly large. That was tight and buff with a little bit of um, with a little bit of cobalt blue, and then just white for our highlight. It's a little wet, wet on wet there. Okay, a little bit there, a little bit there. And now he has light. Let there be light. Okay, does everybody get that? Yeah? <laughs> okay, so I am going to switch out our pitcher here and start with our bear. So what I've got here, I've got uh, a whole bunch of reference photos up here that I'll use. Um, probably this is my main reference, but I'm going to change him up a little bit because I want my bear to be a little bit more mature looking, not, not a baby bear, which is what I got there. And um, I'm looking at this guy's eyes for the nice eye close up. This one's face for the size of his face, but I like the pose on the little guy. So I'm going to, to work from all of those to create my own picture. Okay. And again, I'm going to start with uh, cobalt blue as my sketching color. So I want my bear to, to sit fairly high. I'm going to exaggerate his pose a little bit. Um, and I'm going to put in a paw probably. So I want one of his eyes to, if you, if you think about um, the rule of thirds, okay, um, dividing dividing our canvas up into thirds, okay? And meeting, those thirds meet about there. So I'm thinking I wanna put one of the eyes of the bear at that third, okay? Because that's the sweet spot for when you're, um, when you're composing your picture, okay? So if that's where my eye is, his ear is gonna be up here, okay? His face is gonna be, Let's see, now he's gonna warm up forehead. And because I'm sketching, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change, change my lines here and there. I'll be correcting through the whole thing probably if I see something that I didn't get quite right the first time. Okay. Um, what, what brush are you using? Oh, I'm just using a, uh, I think it's a half inch flat. Okay. Mostly, um, well, not mostly, pretty much always I use flats and um, I'll use a uh, half inch, three quarter inch, um, one inch, and then up from there up to about a two, two or three inch, depending on the size of my uh, canvas. Okay, so I want that that little guy's pose, sort of. So I want a shoulder, shoulder out here. Okay, he's going to be a little bit more than a baby bear. And I'm going to end his body over there. This side is going to lean in a bit. The shoulder is going to be down here. I'm going to put a paw up here. Bears are really like one of the easiest things ever to uh,
Connie, for some reason you're muted. Sorry about that. I don't know why that happened. Hmm. I hope I didn't do that. It might have been me. I apologize. Oh, yeah, I no worries. Trying to mute. I was trying to mute me. <laughs> okay, no worries. Okay, so I'm just going to sketch in the basic form of, uh, of his face. Okay. And his paw here, he's got a couple of nails showing there. Okay. So to start off with, I've got the basic thing worked out. To start off with, um, I like to do undertones, which will, especially on black and white animals, um, what, what happens when you paint in colorful undertones is you get so much more depth to the blacks or to the whites or whatever you're using for your animal. And I really like that. Um, so what I usually do is when I'm looking at my, my images that I'm using, I'll be looking sometimes for an, a very, like a light tinge of another color, like blue or purple or, or something like that. And what I do is I push it to its extreme. Like I go way straight to purple rather than just trying to put in that tinge and, or straight to blue for highlights and things like that. So I'm going to go. Is there Sorry. a chance? Is there a chance you could tilt the camera just down a little bit so we can see the bottom of the canvas? Yeah, there there's nothing happening down there right yet. <laughs> but uh, there you go. And somebody was asking too. Dixie's asking, did we miss direction on the guidelines for the nose? I think you might have been muted. Just oh, okay, yeah, started, okay, started so. To so for the nose, um, the, the size of the nose comes between the eyes. If you measure down from the eye, then you get the size of the nose, okay? And then just follow along. Like uh, it depends on uh, if it's an adult bear or a young bear, depend, depends on how far the, the muzzle goes out to. But in this case, it's a fairly young bear. So it's, it's out to the outsides of the eyes pretty much, okay? Um, and I'll go, I'll go over a lot more detail about the nose when we get to it. So I'm going to start with a purple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all my strokes in the direction of the fur. Okay, that is really important when you're, when you're layering to get, um, to get a more um, <clears throat> interesting color you want to make sure that everything is going in the direction of the fur. Okay, all these big strokes. I'm a big believer in use as big a brush as you can. Okay, in this case, because I'm doing big areas, I can use a giant brush. And I'm following on my picture, I'm following the lines. If you look, if you look up at those, you can see that there's dark areas and light areas. And I'm just following, following those lines around the face. And you could add, um, you could add blues to this. You could add, uh, you know, it, there's really no limit. You could do green, you could do red, you could do all sorts of things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of the cobalt blue in here too, because blue is always a good color for bears. And as I'm looking at him, like I said, I, I'll adjust his shape a little bit. I want him to be giving, giving that kind of over the shoulder look. And before I get into the rest of him, I'm going to, oh, just a second, lay down a little bit of, of raw sienna into his nose. 
Okay. I can put some purple over that too because it's quite dark down the center. Purple, pu purple and raw sienna <laughs> together. Sorry about that. <laughs> purple and raw sienna together may actually make a quite lovely brown. And then um, thinking about what I want to do for the background, um, I guess I will stick to the orange that we had in the uh, in the um, um, picture online. But under that orange, I'm just gonna find my color. Oops, sorry. Uh, This is a very tight, tight space in here. Sorry about that. This is kind of a tight space, so I hit the camera a little bit. I apologize. I'm going to put like a, a, a violet down on the background as well. So we're going to start very purple here, which is good for me. I like purple. <laughs> This is going to show through the orange really beautifully afterwards. And I can, while I'm doing the background, what I like to do is break the edges in places. That means brush into, brush into the edge like that. And the reason for that is um, if you don't do that, if you continually just paint around your object and you don't um, paint into it, what happens is you get a very graphic looking, like almost cartoonish kind of um, um, image because the edges are all the same all the way around. It's like um, if you if you think about um, writing a book, okay, this is like writing a book. If everything is perfect, if all those edges are perfect, it reads like a um, like a textbook. <laughs> if there are breaks and, and emotion and, and lots of color and things like that, it reads like a novel. Okay, so we don't want a textbook. We want a novel. Honey, we're getting some, some glare and some shiny stuff. I don't know if that's the camera angle. Um, it could be it's just a probably just a thing of it being wet paint and yeah. you know, having lights there so let me see if I can raise the camera a bit so there's less of that is that any better it looks better yeah okay thanks okay so we have some background. We have our our our, um, our image worked out. So at this point is when I would add abstract elements. So if you wanted to um, to add things into this, at, uh, this is the point to do it. Uh, what I've got here, I'm going to add some um, collage. And what I've got here is just just um, pieces of of rice paper that I've scribbled on and written on. And I'm just going to tear it up and add it a couple of um, couple of pieces of that into into my uh, image. And then I'm also going to to um, scribble into it a little bit with uh, with some uh, watercolor crayons. A couple of questions for you, Connie. Yeah. It says when you were doing the underpainting, adding the color, were you using any medium with the paint? No, it's just straight paint. It was just uh, water, water and acrylic paint. And what about the base of the canvas? Uh, was that layered with texture, the, what you started with? Yeah, actually, I'm painting over an old image, so that's why there's texture. <laughs> I sometimes will add a little bit of texture, but uh, in this case, I think this this one had some. And so Janice, I think I think. Sorry, sorry, Janice. I see your hand up. Can you just type your question in the uh, chat room? So now I'm using uh, an acrylic medium. It's just matte medium because I don't want it to be shiny. And so I just uh, put some down where I want my paper to go, and then over top of the paper, I'll go, I'll go 
over it as well. So it sticks down well. And what I want, I don't want it into the eyes because the eyes again are the most important from my, from my perspective. But I do want different um, sizes and just a few, a few spots. Okay. The nice thing about um, rice paper is it once you um, put it on with the medium, it almost disappears into the, the background and you just see the little marks, which are kind of fun. All of what it is, your, sorry. What is your ratio of water to acrylic? Oh boy. <laughs> I use a damp brush. <laughs> it depends on what you're doing. Like if you're trying to do a glaze or, uh, or uh, something like that, you use more water. If you're, if you're just trying to get the paint to flow properly, you just use a damp brush. Okay. I'm just going to grab some of the, some of the words in here. I want rough edges on everything. So I'm just tearing off, tearing off the uh, straight lines. And again, I want to cross some, some of the lines, like cross into the background with some of this stuff. The paint is still wet, so I'm getting a little purple on there, but that's okay. Maybe one more piece. I'm going to have to run the hair dryer again on this because it takes a long time to dry when you use a lot of uh, medium. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to mute myself again while I run the hair dryer. Nothing like watching paint dry. <laughs> okay, so my next What's thing that I would do. Quick question for you before yep. you move on. What's the name of sure. the medium you used with the rice paper? Oh, it's just, um, I used a uh, golden acrylic regular gel mat um, medium. Okay. And the brush you were using with that, was that just? Oh, it's just a one inch. It was just a one inch brush. Yeah, nothing fancy. So now um, what I want to do is um, scribble, scribble into this a bit with some colors. I'm using um, uh, watercolor crayons. These are just the Stadler ones. I think there, there might be a mix of some, uh, some Caran d'Ache watercolor crayons in, in there as well. And what I'm, I, the colors I'm choosing are colors that I've put or plan to put inside the image. Okay. So uh, this is the same color as the nose. And I'm just going to scribble, like really just probably not go over the over the paper too much because it's still not dry. But uh, scribble into the rest of it. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not I have no plan. I'm just I want some random marks. Uh, again, I'm running into the problem of the uh, of the medium not being dry, but that's okay. I'll try and avoid those spots. This um, I'm planning on putting some nice blues in there later, and I I like the little circles. They give a sense of uh, uh, I don't know, kind of dreaminess. Would you be able what, to use oil pastels instead of the watercolor crayons? 
I, if you were using oil pastels, I'd say use them later in the process because uh, with watercolor crayons, you can paint over them. Um, oil pastels, you cannot paint acrylic over oil. And oil pastels um, have a, a little bit of an issue because they never set. Um, I would recommend oil sticks rather than oil pastels, just because um, I, I suppose after, if you um, varnish, uh, they'll be okay under the varnish, but um, varnishing oil pastels would be tricky as well. You'd probably have to use a spray. Okay. Um, Always remember uh, oil over acrylics is okay. Acrylic over oil will peel, <laughs> okay? So more random, couple more random colors in here. And then we can start painting, just a sec. Okay, so to give my uh, paper more time to dry, I'm going to do the eyes and the nose now. So we're going to start just like last time with the eyes. We want to make sure they're in the right spot. But um, we're going to start with uh, burnt sienna, and we're just going to do that circle. Okay. And we're going to use Payne's gray and do the cavity of the eye. Oops, that's a little dark. Is that cavity? That shadow, shadowed area around the eye. It's a little dark. Okay, then we want, I want a smaller brush this time. I want to do, get the shape of the eye. Okay, I'm going to be following a little more closely with my images now. With the black, I'm just using black to outline now. Outline that eye. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at my uh, photo references now to get eyes a little bit more specific with light and the way light is hitting. Okay. And the pupil attaches to the upper lid, remember? I think one eye is not big enough here. Get a little bit bigger. Okay. Just so you can see that a little bit better there. Now, what is next? I can go with the lighter brown under the eye. Now, this people, like uh, some people would say, oh, why don't we just do all the color at the same time but it's like when you when you do layers you get little bits of previous layers showing through even if it's not terribly obvious but what that what happens with that is you get i don't know there's there's something that you get with layers where you get tiny little details that wouldn't be there if you just painted the whole thing without doing the layers now I put in burnt sienna, and now I'm putting in some raw sienna under the eye. I think that's a little light at the moment, a little too much. Okay. I'm trying to get that, that black to, to uh, to dry again. So I can do, remember the reflection under the eye. Okay, I, 
I'm doing a little bit of Titan buff with a tiny bit of cobalt blue. And it's just this, this fine line underneath. You see that lighter over here. Okay, and then just some tighten up, lighten it up in a couple of spots. Okay, and I think the black is is um, dry enough that I can put the that haze, that kind of blue reflection from the sky, on the top of the eye, just over the top of the pupil. Okay. Again, it's so subtle; it's hard to see. I'll hold that up so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. And then, again, a little bit of, uh, of Titan Buff. Get more highlight, bigger highlight across there. And you're just using the edge of the brush? I'm just using the edge of this bigger brush, yeah. Um, using a brush bigger than you think is comfortable is often a good idea because it'll give a different type of mark than a tiny little brush will give and it's nice when it gives a kind of a surprising mark or a, a, a mark with blurred edges versus the hard edges okay so there we go there's our there is pretty much our eyes a little bit of light in the corner. Show that to you closer. Okay. Now we'll also do the nose at this point. I have the best nose color ever. It's called Storm Blue and it's a Joe Sonia color, Joe Sonia color. But um, you can also mix this using cobalt blue and um, uh, burnt umber. Those two together will make a, a very similar color to this, but it's kind of a, a dark bluish gray, which I love. And I, I admit I'm lazy. When I can paint out of a tube, I will paint out of a tube. <laughs> so to start with our nose, first of all, let's, let's, um, let's get the dark areas worked out, okay? His nostrils are the darkest areas of his nose. And there's a little bit around here, around here. I'm just doing the very darkest darks of his nose. A little bit on the tip here and underneath. And then I'm going to take that storm gray and go around. There's going to be some burnt umber in this as well. And yeah, mixing, mixing some burnt umber in there is good. It's going to give us the right color. His nose. And his mouth here. I'm using too small a brush. Okay, when, when I find when I'm using too small a brush, what happens is my strokes turn into lines. And I don't want lines. I want big, big kind of uh, bold strokes, which make make a much more interesting mark than than lines do. Let's see here. Want more burnt or raw sienna. Raw sienna here. 
too much water on that. And start narrowing his nose a little bit. I'll give it a wash of gray up here. A little bit of Titan buff into the raw sienna to lighten it up. I'm uh, correcting a little bit where I see it could stand a different shape. Again, I'm following the the hair, the direction of the hair. He's got these little marks above his eyes. And let's see. The lightest lights in here, Some yellows. What color are you using for the side of the snout? It was raw sienna and Titan buff. Thanks. Okay. And then, well, I'm gonna use, um, it's like a, uh, blue gray, a light blue gray. This one is called is Wedgwood from System Three. I don't recommend this paint, but this color is fabulous. And I'll, I, I, like I said, I'm lazy. If I find uh, a color in a tube that I like, <laughs> I will use it. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of this Wedgwood. It's the light. It's a light blue gray, light cool gray. I'm gonna mix Connie, a little bit. Yeah. Connie, can you mix Titan buff? Uh, you, you could uh, you could get something close by just adding a little bit of um, either raw sienna to white or um, yellow ochre to white will give you something close, but a tiny, tiny bit. All you want is a little tinge, tinge of warmth to the white to give you something close to a Titan buff. Uh, what was I doing? Um, I've lost my color on here. <laughs> okay. What I'm doing is I want to start into the highlights of the nose here. So I'm, I'm mixing kind of a, uh, I'm mixing a warm color with a cool color to get a, a different sort of gray. Like, uh, I'm just looking for something that's that's going to give me a very neutral, neutral color for the top of his nose here. I think his nostrils are too low. And it's nice with acrylic that you can always, always fix it. So to raise them up, I'm going to Add some lighter that gray and that uh, storm gray underneath. And get some of that um, blue gray and raw sienna that I mixed for highlights in here. It's always kind of a highlight on the bottom of the nostrils, maybe underneath there. So always some highlights around on both sides of the nose. Oh, I need a big brush again. I keep mixing the raw, sien raw sienna with the blue, and I'm just going to put a glaze over top of this to get some highlights in there. 
And sorry, did you have a question? Nope. Okay. Need some darker, darker stuff in there. Going back to the storm gray for shaping this part of his nose. A little bit more black. And now just a highlight, highlight here, and a highlight across here. Actually, you know what? You know what this nose needs is some blue, some cobalt blue. It's a little messy. I always find that um, when I when I'm trying to do exactly what's happening in in the photo reference, it doesn't work as well. It's when I just kind of decide, okay, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Here's his nose, and it'll take a little bit more shape as I paint around it. So for painting around it, first I'm going to start with, um, for the rest of the bear, I'm going to start with Payne's Gray because I don't want it to be too, I, I want to leave it open for myself to go a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. So I'm doing kind of a, a mid black kind of, kind of tone because Payne's Gray is very blue black. I'm just gonna pretty much go over the whole thing with Payne's gray, and then I'll I'll start darkening and lightening with uh, with um, full black or with uh, with blues to to lighten. And at this point too, I'm going to break those lines again. Okay, again, you know, I want soft and hard areas to my line. So where I cross the line will be a soft spot. Whereas this part right here, once I, I um, do my background, this will be a hard line. This part will be a softer line. Okay. Well, Honey, makes... when, you're, when you're done with the color there, I've got Dixie wanting to see the nose up close again, please. Okay. I can show that to you right now. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay. So what I particularly want to do when I'm when I'm uh, putting in the, the Payne's gray is I want to make sure I've got the shape of his nose correct. And I want to make sure the shapes of his head and shoulders are where I want them to be. His ears too. Does it matter at this point to be painting in the direction of the fur? It does. It does matter still. So if I've if I've uh, gone in the wrong direction, I try and fix that up. But um, through the whole thing, through the whole process, you should be going in the direction of the fur. If you don't, like there are reasons not to. Um, one reason not to would be if you're trying for a more abstract type of imagery and you could do all the strokes in the same direction, like up and down or sideways or, or swirly, and you'll get a more stylized look, which can be a, a lot more abstract if you're, try, if you're really trying to get something quite abstract looking. He's starting to come along, He's starting to look like a bear. And while I'm doing this, I might leave some of these scribble marks, paint around them. Just 
to give myself some of that abstracty feel to things. I might paint, you know, let little a loop or something stay as is within within the body. If you paint over the um, watercolor crayons, sometimes it'll just disappear, which is okay too. It can, um, these kind of marks are really a, 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 what's the word ephemeral <laughs> you know they come and go they they disappear quite easily which is fine it's, it's the best of both worlds when they disappear disappear a little bit but are still um subtly there Connie what is the color again that you're using I'm using Payne's gray right now yeah okay so my next color would be my blackest blacks okay so i'm just going to go to this is i believe carbon black if anybody is uh, concerned about what black is i'm using and what i'm doing now is i'm looking at the very darkest darks on the bear and I'm putting those in, and they're going to help shape shape it his his uh, his body a lot. And again, I'm sticking to the direction where I can. I'm not too concerned about um, being perfect. I'm never concerned about being perfect. <laughs> I think a painting is a heck of a lot more interesting when there's lots of imperfections. Okay. Perfect. Perfect is textbook, right? It's always don't want textbook. Okay. A little bit of dark there, a little bit of dark around here. Hmm. Put up there, maybe. And through his body, we had a paw up, so there's a little bit to, to help define his paw. A bit through there, this edge, a little bit darker through here. Are there other papers that you can use instead of rice papers? Oh yeah, you can you can use any paper. Um, it depends. Um, the thing I like about rice paper is it's just it's thin and kind of disappears. But use whatever you like. If you want patterns, like use use. Uh, um, there's some beautiful Japanese papers that have uh, that are hand printed that you can use. There's all kinds of Japanese papers that have lots of patterns in them, which can really add to to the abstractness of things. Um, I've been finding that too with the inside of the security envelopes. Uh, I've been fascinated by the patterns that uh, appear on those envelopes, and I've started. Oh, that's cool. Those. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Yes, you can use anything, really. Um, the one thing to pay attention to is if it buckles or if it'll lay down flat, because some some papers will really buckle on you and, and cause bubbles and stuff. You want to stay away from that. Um, just a sec here. Okay, so now... Um, I'm thinking because I'm painting. That, sorry, that last color you used was black, right? It was black. It was black. carbon black. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I have to run the hair dryer again because if I keep working at this, I'm going to just lift paint rather than add paint. So I'm going to mute it for a sec, and you can ask. Um, Actually, no, you can't ask me a question when I'm muted, but <laughs> I'm going to run the hair dryer. I'll be right back.
Here we go. Are there any questions at all? There any is. What, uh, what is the size of the canvas you're working on? Ah, oh, good question. Um, it is 20 by 24. Ah, uh, so what am I doing next? Um, I I am looking at this purple and I'm thinking um, there needs to be some more light and definition in, in my bear here. And I'm debating whether to um, put in some more um, Payne's gray or actually a wash of black. I think I might go for the wash of black. Could you use ivory black instead of carbon black? You can use any black. Um, I've, uh, I'm just thinking which one is, there's one that's transparent and I think it might be ivory. Um, I can't remember. Do you know, Annette, which I think you're which right. Black? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's right. ivory black. Yeah. And that's probably the one you don't want to use. <laughs> you want to use one that will go totally opaque. Okay, so any other any other black besides ivory would probably be good. I just want to blend this a little bit better. And a little bit more pure black there. A little bit more on that. A little bit more up there. And a break. Okay, so our highlights on this, I'm going to go for teal right teal and the reason for that is um for one thing the in the pictures that i'm using there is a hint of teal and again i'm going with my idea that i'm going to push that right into teal instead of um, just trying to create a hint i i want it to look not totally realistic i want it to look a little edgier than realistic. So, comment that this is absolutely beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I have a question too. Do you kind of hop between fluid acrylics and heavy body acrylics? You know, I do. I'll paint with whatever color works, and um, I I I like fluid a lot, but fluid isn't always opaque enough, and usually I want the colors I use to be able to go between opaque and and uh, clear or um, transparent. So um, I, I will use heavy body acrylics often because they'll go opaque. Okay, so he has a lot of highlights on his head. So we're going to start there on, the, on his forehead. And again, we're paying attention to the direction of his fur. My brush is a little too wet. He's got a line coming down here. So anywhere where I see highlights, I'm gonna put some of this turquoise. But I'm I'm using it quite transparent. It's a it's a wash more than anything. So you're just thinning that with water and not with medium. That's right. I I use medium, but I tend not to use it in the painting. You know, I'll use it for applying things and and. Uh, I, you, I, I will recommend though, if people have a hard time um, thinning their paint to the right consistency, use, um, use glazing medium, like for, for doing this sort of thing. Glazing medium will always give you a good, a good um, coverage, whereas water will sometimes, uh, the paint will sometimes break up and not uh, lay properly. But it's a, it's a bad habit. I. I started early, hard to break at this point. Okay, he's got some highlights under his eyes. 
rounded these eyes, trying to keep it from dripping. Is there a chance you could tilt uh, that again a little bit when you're painting? There's a lot of glare up on top of that. Yeah. There. Super. Right. Can, you, can you see that a little bit better? Yeah, I can see it a little bit better too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oops, that didn't need to be there. That's so, Christina so, asking if there's a, or sorry, that's Wendy asking if there's going to be a draw for this painting at the end. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Would you use a retarder to slow down the drying time? That's a question from Christina. You know what? Um, I am exact. I'm the exact opposite. I'm constantly struggling because it doesn't dry fast enough for me. So if anything, I want it to dry faster. <laughs> I don't want it to dry slow. Okay, so I want to figure out where my paw is because I'm putting in a paw where there isn't one in my photo. So comment that says he's looking pretty handsome. Oh, thank you. I'm liking, I'm liking where he's going. Okay, so my, the paw is going to be in here. Probably have to put some more blacks in there to get that to work properly. Yeah. Get back into black. Hmm. It's too regular. Don't want regular strokes like that. Uh, a little bit through here. Okay, so I want to create more of a pop. Oh, feeling right here. Get them some toenails too. Toes, maybe just toes. Some extra black in there to, to help that stand out a bit. Well, that's amazing how you just made that paw pop. Yeah, just a little little dark around beside the light is the way you do that. So right here, I've put in dark, and if I put my brightest brights right there, that paws will really stand out. So Connie had someone ask about the background color and I said that was cad red light, but I think you put something else on top of it too. Yes, you? yes, I put uh, a violet, violet over top of the cad red. And we're gonna end up with orange over top of that. And we're almost there actually, almost to the point of, uh, of doing that. Just have a couple more little details for the bear's face. Go back into the raw sienna to give them those little little yellow marks above the eyes. Okay, I think he's looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's do that background. Pat is asking if uh, there's going to be claws. Um, you know what? I gave him toes rather than claws. I could give him claws. Um, if I'm going to give him claws, what I would probably use is um, some grayed out um, raw sienna rather than white or anything like that. And I would just kind of indicate a little bit, you know, like that sort of thing. I don't know if I'm putting them in the right place. But subtle, you know, you don't want, 
when you're doing this sort of thing, you don't want them to stand out as the most obvious feature. <laughs> you know, you don't want the eyes drawn to those. You just want a little bit of an indication. We've got Jane that's commented that says this is shaped up together so fast and beautifully. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, so now we're just, we've just got the background to do. And what I'm going to use is Cad Orange and uh, Naples Yellow for that background. I might, before I start into that, I might add a little bit of orange and purple scribbles into this guy just to, because I've lost most of them. That forehead is looking a little hard. Shelly says, yep, it took only 30 years to do this in what, just over an hour, Connie? That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's how, that's how you measure it. <laughs> Take it. To get to this point, it took me uh, 30 years and half an hour. <laughs> Okay, so back to our big brush. So, a little black, maybe a bigger brush, even. So, I'm going with even a bigger brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna, going to go in and paint around some of these marks. And what that's going to do is just create a lot of randomness in my background, which I like. I might add a little bit of Naples yellow to it to lighten it up or close to the bear. Usually, usually I try and get a kind of halo effect on whatever animal I'm doing. So I'll probably add that in after I get some of this orange down. I probably need to brush a little bit of the orange into it to, to make it make it uh, harmonize a little bit better. I'm just painting around my little marks, you know, and I'll, I'll go in and out and look at it and see what's working, what's not. Like this circle on his head may not work very well. <laughs> There it is. I was looking for my cloth. So I want to give a little bit of orange into, into here too. So what I'm doing again is I'm breaking those lines. Okay. Just gonna add little strokes, little strokes of orange here and there. You know, before I did that, I made sure I didn't have a lot on my brush. I just have a tiny bit. Whoa. Okay. Back to back to regular painting. Whenever you do um, something like this, like where I've put in these these kind of heavy heavy blue lines. I find that it adds that graphic kind of element back into it, which can be good if it's not all your edges, right? If there's, it's, it's adding kind of that abstracty feel. And it works best when it's not perfect, when some of the lines are blurry, some are crisp. One of the things about painting that I know really, really um, makes me go, oh, that's beautiful, is when there's subtle tones, like if there's all kinds of little variations in. Um, in the tones all next to each other. That's 
what really gets me going for painting. It's what inspires me to paint. Very much about, about the colors. Okay. One thing I'm finding is in a lot of cases, my brush has been too wet, so I'm getting drippy marks everywhere, but drips can be attractive too. Not, not going to worry about it too much. I like that I have different things happening around the bear so that there are um, interesting bits and pieces happening all through throughout the background. It almost it it almost gives a feel of um, forest, not exactly, but almost, which I like. I like that that feeling of. Uh, kind of uh, trees and, and uh, floaty, floaty dust bits and things like that. Okay, I think I just want to um, give him that halo effect and then we'll be done, I think. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of Naples yellow to my, to my orange. I'm gonna be going right up against right up against him with the lighter color. We're frozen a little bit. Oh yeah, I see that. Oh, there we go. Now you're oh. back. No. Is it, do, you, do you actually see the... Um, the painting, no, we see the, you. Yeah, what's happening there? Hmm. It decided it didn't like the... Uh, oh, there we go. Just a sec. Now what's happening? <laughs> come on, turn over. Come on. Somebody's wondering, did you hit reverse by mistake? No. <laughs> Just a sec here. I'm gonna do that for now. Let me know if it switch. Yeah, let me know if it switches again. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on with the camera. All the, the wonderful things with technology, right? Right, those phones. Yeah, that's just my cell phone. So what I'm doing here, I think you missed you missed the beginning, is I'm just high, I'm giving that halo effect around the bear. With Naples yeah. yellow, right? Yes, with a little bit of Naples yellow mixed into the orange. I can, I'm getting some of that subtle, subtle color differences that I love when I do that. And usually there's like a couple of spots that I'll usually make the warm the the brightest when I'm doing this and it's somewhere in the neighborhood of the eyes maybe at the top of the head a little bit I'll make those the the lightest spots and I've made my edges purposefully jagged and and un, and uh, not regular. Okay, I think he's done. I think probably if I if I sat with him for a bit, I would probably have little little fixes and things to do. But um, I think he is mostly done. Wow. Yeah. So now, if um, if people want to raise hands, um, we can uh, answer questions live. If you want to 
you can open up your own mic if you get called on and uh, and uh, ask your question. Just a sec here. I'm just going to put, is there anybody who would like to ask any questions? <laughs> You can, if you, um, if you look at the bottom, there's something uh, of uh, the bottom of your screen, you can hit reactions. And in there, there, there's a little thing that says, raise your hand. And you can, uh, you can raise your hand if you, if you want to ask a question. Someone or, wants to see him head on into the camera, like right full on into the camera, as opposed to sideways. Can okay. Hold, him head on? hold on just a sec here. You got to get back into... Oh. Okay, so he's freezing a little bit again. Let's see if I can get him right in there without the glare. Nice. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about, like, the rice paper seems to have been swallowed up in the thing. Can you see it more, like, live? Um, yeah, I, there's, you know, again, it's like it's ephemeral like it, it disappears if you look like there's little tiny bits i don't know if you can see that you can see i can see like little words kind of half half looking out and up in here there's little you, you probably can't see it from what i what what i can see on the camera you can't see it but i can see like little little words written in there still we'll have to yeah it's all it's all just subtle you know <laughs> tiny tiny subtleties um, can, you re can you reiterate again where the video will be available and when oh yes yeah and um what's going to happen is uh hopefully the the video will be available on the um the kensington art supply website and maybe on their Facebook page. And I'll probably share it on my Facebook as well. Um, and it'll probably be up until at least the end of February, maybe a little bit into March for you to watch, but it'll be two or three weeks, okay? And um, if you're interested in uh, taking uh, a, a class to, to, um, to have instruction. Usually in my classes, you have an opportunity to show your work and I can either um, give you feedback just as we're, we're working together, or you can send your, email, your uh, picture in an email to me and I'll uh, give you some feedback about it, uh, critique or whatever, you, whatever, whatever kind of information you're after, okay? Qu um, question here, why those spots for the lightest lights? Uh, sorry? Why those spots for the lightest lights? Uh, spots like this or yeah. spots like this? Up, up to, I think they're talking up around the ears and stuff like that where you've got the spots for the lightest lights. Why Why those? Um, I think that's like what this? Janet's asking. Um, this I would probably get rid of because I think it was a mistake right there. <laughs> but uh, the lightest lights are like the tips of his ears. Um, if she's asking about this kind of thing, this is just um, to make an interesting background. Um, if she's talking like like those oh. kind of things. Connie? Yeah? Oh, it's Janet Bradish. It's right at the end when you were mixing the Naples yellow with the cat orange. And you were oh, saying yeah. you like to put the highlights at the top of the head and then Oh, yeah. The so I, yeah. I'm just curious why those specific spots. Oh, okay. Okay. So the reason to do that, the reason to put your brightest, lightest background lights around these is because you frame the eyes. Okay. It's, it's like a, a, a presentation of the eyes, you know, you don't want it down here because your attention will go to those lightest spots. All your attention always goes to um, the areas of greatest um, value difference first. And so if there's a greater value difference from here to here than from here to here, your attention is going to go up there, right? And that it will bring your attention to the eyes, okay? Great. Because it's close. 
Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. I have, uh, Kira has her hand up. Uh, Kira, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh, thanks. Um, so I'm really new to using acrylic paint and just loading the paint onto my brush. I notice mm -hmm. it sort of slides up and kind of bulks up higher on my brush than where I want it. Is there a oh, trick to that? There is a trick I will show you. Loading your brush is a, uh, is a trick you know, all in itself. <laughs> and for, for the way I paint, um, can you see that? So what you want to do is when you have your, your blob of paint on your uh, palette, you want to just take the edge of it and pull it away and just go either side like that. Can you put um, your palette a little bit higher? Sorry. There we go. So you just want to pull it away from the, from the pile rather than sticking it right into the pile by pulling it away and then loading it so it's like halfway loaded. You'll have a lot more control. And another, another good thing is to have a rag nearby where you can always blot off the excess moisture. Okay, so you get it, so your brush is damp but not sopping wet. Okay, because with, um, with acrylic paint, you end up um, keeping your brushes in the water all the time. So it's important to have some way to get the water out of them. But uh, what, I, what I suggest is if your brush gets overloaded, just rinse it off and start again. Okay, so start again with the uh, loading. Okay. So with those, um, with the collage, um, what you can do is, add any of those kind of uh, abstracting elements, you can add them at any point really. Um, by adding them after the first layer of paint, chances are a lot of them get obscured. And, and that's true in this, in this case, a lot of the, um, the collage is quite obscured, but there are little bits that show. And um, does anyone uh, follow Nicholas Wilton? Um, Art to Life, I think is his, uh, it's his thing. He, he had some, a great way of putting it. Um, he talked about the loud conversation and the quiet conversation. And when you think of it in terms of art, the loud conversation is what you see from across the room, okay? As you walk into a room, you look across and you can see the, the value differences, the shape generally, it's the thing that makes you wanna walk over to a painting and get a closer look. But when you walk over to the painting for a closer look, you get the quiet conversation. And that is all those little subtle things that are happening in the surface that reward the viewer for coming up close. Okay. It's a really, a really nice way to put that. And that, that gives you a reason to add all those little subtle things because it rewards your viewer. It makes people stop and keep their eyes on your art longer, which I think all of us want. We want people to stop and appreciate and really look at our work, right? Absolutely. So Denise says she's just signed up with Nicholas Wilton for a new session starting February 15th. So yeah, there's a free one. Workshop. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got a free one coming up. So he's a good one to look up. Is, yeah. he, is he Canadian? No, he's American. He's American. Trying to um, Canadian. <laughs> sorry? I'm trying to support Canadian artists who teach. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so I, uh, I we all get our wisdom from various sources. Yeah. What? Can I see the eyes a little bit closer just to photograph because I have trouble with the eyes always. Thank you. Sure. I'll just snap a, can I snap a photo? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Wow. That's amazing. He's glaring a bit. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Can he look, he looks a little peeved. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. What was that? The information for your classes, is that on um, 
your website? Yes. And my website is just conniegertz.com. It's C-O-N-N-I-E-G-E-E-R-T-S. And that's for regular classes. There is a full day workshop coming up in March with Kensington Art Supply though. So, and, and that one is, is more along this line. Like we're, we're gonna be um, covering um, more ways of abstracting and mark making and everything and to, to, to help create something that is both um, recognizable, but also abstracted. Will that be online or in class? If it's yeah, it's listed on the on the Kensington website under workshops, I believe. As as an in class workshop, we're hoping the government will have lifted the uh, the rules uh, by then to allow us to have actual classes in the store again. We're hoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've got one tentatively booked for March twenty eighth if all goes well and we manage to to open up the classrooms. So. Uh, there is a, a live in studio class that is booked um, that you can sign up for. That's on my website. Connie, I, I think it, actually I think it's on the uh, the on the uh, store website the as well. Yes, it yeah. is. And yeah. there's a link to Eventbrite where you can sign up for it. Yeah. So, Connie, I have Justine asking: Was thirty years worth it? And how do you? Oh know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I, and also, uh, Denise is asking, can you get the details on Facebook for Art to Life? If you could post that on your Facebook page. Um, I think I already have shared it. So if you go to my page, I think it's there already. And Daintree said, uh, I just went through my Payne's Gray in it. I hope you have lots. We do. <laughs> Sorry, you went through the paint, your Payne's Gray in what? The through their pains gray and and that hope we have lots and i was just saying we do we've got lots of yes gray. yes for sure yeah actually uh golden just came in <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so we're we're stocked up and what was that titanium color that you used titanium titanium buff titanium buff yeah it's um just a sec here oh, it's this stuff Thank Titan, you. Titan buff. Thank you. Um, there are other names for it, parchment. Um, off white. Off white, yeah. Yeah, um, warm white. Uh, there's, there's, it's basically white with a tinge of cream to it. It's more of a cream. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so how are we doing? Oh, we still have half an hour. <laughs> and, you, and I do have Christy here as a comment said, next time you do one of these, would it be possible to send out a supply list ahead of time? Um, sure. Uh, like I said, in this case, um, it, it really was just um, billed as a demo, not a class. Um, with classes, uh, we definitely can do supply lists. Yeah. Does anyone... Uh, who uh, painted along want to share, you can put up your hand. We can see if, if anybody's brave enough to share with, with everybody else. Nobody's oh, putting up their hands up. I we do, we do, we do. We've got Christy Cullen. Christy, do you want to unmute yourself? Okay. Oh, sorry, I was trying to get my stuff together. <laughs> there. Do you have your video on? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put you on spotlight. Okay, can you uh, just tilt it toward the camera a little bit? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, good job. Good job. Yeah, that's looking really nice. Yeah. One thing, one thing with the eyes that I would suggest is um, thinning out that white line a little bit, like just make it a little bit thinner and uh and his eyes will look a little and and having more black actually around the iris as well so there's black between that white reflective line and the eyeball okay <laughs> but it looks great you did an awesome job very cool yeah. and then we have karen peterson can you show us what uh 
did I did yeah. I did I highlight the right person or <laughs> was it no I just highlighted Shirley I highlighted Shirley oh. why don't we do Christy Cullen first sorry exactly. sorry Christy okay. I grabbed the wrong one <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks Shirley <laughs> oh there we go oh that's beautiful yeah yeah that's beautiful good job yeah so you used um it looks like more red a reddish per, I, purple underneath i yeah. actually only had red yellow blue black and white to work with <laughs> well good job you did, you did so excellent awesome. like, that's awesome and, and that's the way it should be you should be able to do this with what you have on hand so good job thanks. way to go okay so who who else was there karen, karen peterson uh, i'm looking for karen um and why don't i see her i'm waving at you <laughs> oh i'm still I, hold on a sec here i'm on the wrong page probably oh there we go oh there you are okay there's karen oh nice that is really nice yeah he's thank he's, you He's quite a mo moody fellow. <laughs> He's got lots of lots of heart in his eyes. <laughs> yeah, and good job with the nose. You did you did an excellent nose. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's that awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so got, uh, uh, your name is Ted. She's got her hand up. The the. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, you have to unmute yourself, Ted. <laughs> are you, are you Ted or is your husband Ted? <laughs> oh, just a sec here. Um, you're still muted. I'm gonna try to unmute you. If I can find you in the list. Oh, you're still uh, still muted. Well, let's let's look anyway. Don't worry about that. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> oh, he's got beautiful eyes, and the nose worked out really well too. You're um, you're a little foggy looking. Your picture's a little foggy, so he can't see the details very well. But but he looks great. The eyes look wonderful. <laughs> that's that's great. Oh, we still can't hear you, unfortunately. I can't find you on the list, so. Sometimes in the bottom left hand corner, if you're on a PC in the bottom left hand corner should be your mute button. If it's got a red line through it, just click on it. Or if it's on an iPad, it'd be on the top right hand side if you're working on an iPad. It's funny, I can't seem to unmute her either. No, no, it might, it might be a problem with your microphone. We're, we're, we're gonna, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for showing. <laughs> Thanks for showing it, though. Okay, so who who else would like to show? Who who is next? I don't see. Uh, I've got. We've got the three hands up. Oh, hang the on a sec. Uh, CM Falls. Okay, let's grab. Let's see you. Hello. Hi. Oh, he's lovely. <laughs> he's lovely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Good okay. job. Yeah. And then next is Renee. Okay, Renee, let's see yours. Oh, there's Renee. Oh yeah, it's a little bit dark and glary, so he's just kind of. But yeah. I'm busy with the blue. I really like the blue. So. Yeah, yeah, it looks <laughs> it great. great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. Way to go. Okay, and then Karen, Karen Peterson, I think was the next. Yes. Okay. You did me already. Did I do you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's, is that everyone who wanted to share? A question. Oh, okay. The question is, uh, what kind of black would you recommend? You said don't use ivory. Well, the only reason not to use ivory is because it's a transparent black. Okay. So you want something opaque. So any other black will do because the rest of them are all opaque. <laughs> okay. Uh, ivory is ivory is kind of a warm black too, which is which is fine, but um, the, the problem with it is that it's more transparent. Okay. 
I have Sonia, I think, asked a question that I'm not quite sure. It says, what colorblind is best? And I'm not sure what she means by that. Um, who was it that asked that the question? Say, well, it should be black. <laughs> oh, that was, what color that was black it? is best. Okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. And we've answered that. So, and then I think yeah. Bart Ferguson's got here. I said, I, I did my bear in watercolor because I don't have acrylics and I thought it would be a disaster, but I learned lots. I don't know, okay. Bart, if you want to share your watercolor. Yeah, yeah. Let's see it if you're, if you feel comfortable. Where, where is Barb? Barb Ferguson. Oh. Um, do you want to share? I'm looking for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. there you are. There you are. Hold on a sec here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did great. The only thing you can't do is the background really yeah. well. Yeah. Lay layering is a lot trickier with watercolor. Yeah. <laughs> I've always found it very frustrating because, yeah. because I like to do layers. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. You have to, you have to plan it first. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you have yeah. to... You have to leave the um, the whites, yeah, or, or or go in with gouache or something like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. That's awesome. And apparently, Anne Christine wants to show hers as well. Okay. Uh, I I saw Anne. Where did she go? Oh, there she. There you are. Or I didn't know how to raise my hand. <laughs> There's a little thing called reactions at the bottom that you yeah. can. Uh, if you go into that, there's a thing that says raise your hand, well, but that's okay. I've got you, I've got you on now. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yeah, that's beautiful. I like I like those um, textures that you have in his body and the uh, kind of grassy textures and stuff through there. Yeah, those are those are great. I used a Christmas card that I just had handy. I just ripped it up. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I like I said, you can use any kind of paper. Thank it you. Yeah. Okay. So I have Christina asking, would you repeat one of your owl workshops? Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, I'll, I'm putting up new, um, new classes all the time and I don't decide ahead of time. Like I'm usually, okay, what, what do I need to come up with next? So if, if you're interested in owls, yeah, for sure. We can do an owl workshop at some point. Mm -hmm. I think um, I, I, I should be putting up some either tomorrow or, or the next day because we're, we're down to this week and then um, I haven't got anything posted for the following weeks yet. But they, they come up and if you're interested in, um, in being on my mailing list, you can do that on my website. You just sign up and uh, you'll be notified. Oh, does I've Son... Got, uh, son Gun is... Uh, yeah, for sure. Hand up and I've got someone else who doesn't know how to put their hand up, but we'll get to them. Oh, okay. Cool. Son, that's beautiful. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, it isn't it isn't it amazing how they're all very the the eyes are very emotive and very emotional and the bears all have a different personality. You know, all, all this similar colors and stuff but very different personalities. Did you have any questions or comments, Son? Oh, I think you're you're still um Oh. <laughs> no. oh, sorry. I just said, um, yeah, this is really good. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. Thanks for taking part. Okay. Was there somebody else? Yeah, uh, there's, there's Dane Tree, Hanrahan. Uh, I can't figure out how to put up my hand. So I thought we'll just, we'll just find you. Okay. I'm just looking for Dane Tree. Just a sec here, I think. Oops. Just a second here. This is this is like um... <laughs> oh there you are <laughs> there you are <laughs> I've got two pages to look through so <laughs> there is oh, behind oh yeah yeah he's beautiful he's, I ran out you... of paint gray oh did you <laughs> that's okay <laughs> he's he's looking very moody very very soft and moody. You always do nice bears. <laughs> Copy you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's beautiful. <laughs> he's beautiful. And I've got uh, 
Shirley is asking if you could show the eyes up close again, please. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Here we go. When when you're doing Thank when, you. you're doing, when you're doing eyes, um, remember that formula because it is just a formula, okay? And it will always it will always make fairly nice eyes if you follow the formula. And then again, somebody's just asking the process again for the rice paper. Uh, was it a gel medium? Um, yes. Maybe you could go over again what you did with the rice paper. Yeah, for sure. And again, uh, also too, why not matte medium? Or could you use matte medium? It is matte medium, actually. It, it is matte medium. But you want gel rather than fluid. Um, this, is, this is the stuff I'm using. It's just golden um, uh, gel medium. And the reason for gel versus regular uh, fluid medium is uh, fluid medium is wet and takes a long time to dry. Gel medium dries faster. And it could warp it the paper too, right? What's that? It could warp the paper too. Yes. Yeah. Because the wetter, wet. the wetter um, materials will warp the paper more likely and give you bubbles. Whereas gel medium will rarely give you bubbles. And are you putting the gel down on the bottom as well as the top? Yes. I, so I, I brush gel on first, then I put the paper on, and then I brush it on top. And um, like I said, it, it's um, like uh, the type of printer paper, you know, the kind of stuff you would use in your printer doesn't work very well as a, as a collage element. It tends to bubble and, and um, stick up, um, but um, pretty much um, most papers work pretty good. And, and with gel medium, they work better than with fluid medium. Almost all of them will bubble with fluid medium. I've got one more person has their hand up. That's Caroline Thompson. Okay to share just a sec here oh there you are hold on <laughs> here we go <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah <laughs> that's fun we've He's got great. two here oh He's yeah fun, a little baby <laughs> oh <laughs> he's great he's great yeah you guys did great I kept, um, <laughs> and i turned it off oh we're not made i kept losing yeah. the eyes i missed how to do the make the heads stand out like get the darks in so oh yeah so that it stands out right the dark and the lights mm -hmm. so they're yeah. usually um just a sec here let me switch here but usually um the forehead from here into here will be okay. one of the lightest areas on the on the bear okay and then there's usually a couple of lines that will help shape the face the shoulder gets a little bit of highlight top of the paw gets some highlight but it's mostly this forehead area that's really bright okay thank you you're welcome my guy looks very worried <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they they get quite expressive <laughs> I think that's it for questions and I don't see any more hands and lots and lots of comments of thank yous and uh, how wonderful this all is and Connie I know you'll be able to see the comments after the fact too. Yeah. I will I will save the file I think you can yeah too. yeah, the file. yeah I think I can yeah okay. yeah for sure so, so um, we're we're at about 10 to 3 do you want to stop is the it recording um, if yeah, I can uh, I can stop the recording now. Um, if anybody has any more questions, that's fine.